Hello everyone, my name is Kate and I'm a hypnotherapist and I'm talking about fears, phobias, anxiety, worry and panic attacks and all the other stuff connected to our mental health. But today is a very interesting topic. Today is the topic about fear of dying. One of the fears that are on the one side is very understandable, right? When you are 85 or you're 95, right? You're thinking about the end of your physical form. But on the other side, this fear started to impact a lot of young people, people who are like 25, 35, uh, 45 and up, at, at the age when you are supposed to enjoy your life, when you are supposed to see life as an adventure, as a fun, as a quest, as a game, you know, and you are actually sitting at home or you have these flashbacks, you have these triggers, you know, that are keeping you stuck in life. You cannot do anything. You're like paralyzed because you are afraid of dying at any point. The fear of dying is the reason for a lot of other phobias, like fear of heights, fear of spiders, fear of um, flying, fear of driving, right? There were lots of phobias are connected to the fear of dying. So this is a really, really important let's go um so fear of dying is a very intrusive fear like you're you can you can have in your mind like a snowball you're first thinking about what can happen of course imagine in the worst scenario um then you can Im amplify that thought you know add in more and more scenarios to it and then it becomes like a huge intrusive thoughts that is not leaving you you're frustrated, you are upset, you're depressed, you're anxious, you're panicky because of this fear. And some people really identify this fear, they accept they have it, some people don't. Some people just, you know, they, they don't even understand they have this fear of dying. Though they might have a phobia of flying, right? Where underlying fear can be a fear of dying. So. Naturally, we all start to get interested in dying. You know, we, we, we think about death, right? We are interested in how this process is going to go, when, when our life is going to end. And as early as like three, four years of age, you know, kids start to ask, where do we go? What happened to my granny? What happened to my mom or dad if they passed away, right? So they start to really, really understand not not understand but they start to put the meaning towards death right and it's very important at that early age for parents to really explain what it is so that the child uh, accepts it as a natural process and actually is not thinking about that and overthinking death but looking forward to life to the future and not thinking about the end right so what are the symptoms of the fear of dying by the way this fear is purely psychological there is nothing it has physical symptoms for sure but it's definitely nothing you know uh, connected to any physical issue or physical um physical um symptom right so it's it's just the irrational psychological um, fear imposed by social media standards, you know, society, community, uh, our beliefs that we form, form in childhood. So the symptoms of the fear of dying will be, uh, first one is the negative catastrophizing thoughts. You can wake up at, in the middle of the night, you know, and you have these catastrophe that is going to happen and you feel it, you know, you feel it in all your body, the tension, the heart race, the, you know, the anxiety, right? So you have this catastrophizing thought that something bad is going to happen uh, inevitably. Um, another one is anxiety and panic attacks, of course, right? When you are catastrophizing, it's a snowball and your body can have such a, um, such a strong physical symptoms that you can go into the panic attacks right? Um, why people have health anxiety, and we're going to talk about it in, in another video, but, right? But health anxiety is also the sphere of dying, underlying. And people sometimes start to take medication, you know, just to calm, to shut down, to release the symptoms, the anxiety, the panic, the worry, right? Um, but 
at the same time they don't face the, the, the root cause. That's why if you're taking medication, you're gonna up the dose and up the dose and up the dose because your body, your subconscious mind is still gonna talk to you. Something is wrong, please, please help me. Not by shutting down the symptoms, but actually revealing the root cause. So this is why, this is why in many cases, um, medication works, but in many, many cases, it doesn't help, you know, and actually leads to even more complication and more side effects. So people who are on medication need to, to have this complex approach, both physical and psychological, right? Um, so another symptom is um, being very cautious around everything. So, you know, sometimes people even stay at home and don't go out. They have social anxiety, right? They develop social anxiety. You're not born with anxiety. You're not born with social anxiety. You are born lovable, you know, abundant. You, um, every child, even if they are in a very traumatic experience, in a very traumatic childhood, in a very abusive childhood, neglected childhood, they're still born with this ability to be happy, with this, you know, born capability to be happy and to be social and to be loved, to be appreciated, praised and celebrated. So this, so sometimes people just stay at home and they actually develop the obsessive compulsive disorders, right? They check the doors all the time. They, they sometimes have obsessive compulsive disorder about their tests, health tests, right? They go to the doctors and double check and double check, but because they feel they have something really serious with their health so they can die, right? Um, or sometimes people are overachievers, you know? Sometimes people like so overachieving, trying to gain as much as possible to reach as many goals because they feel like, oh, I'm so afraid of dying that if I die, I might as well just accumulate all of these goals, achievements, right? Uh, money, right? Just so that I lived. Because who knows what's gonna happen to me tomorrow. And if it's very obsessive, that's not good, right? We always think about the end goal, of course, but not in this, it shouldn't be done in this case. Um, also, sometimes we communicate with our friends and with our loved ones like it's the last time, like it's literally the last time. They're crying, you know, they are um, looking at their kids or looking at their parents. They feel, what if this is the last time I see you? And I'm pretty sure a lot of people experience that, you know, especially like um, people who know they might have some health condition or uh, they have seen someone suddenly died right? They, they now start to understand that, oh, it can happen to me as well, right? Um, talking to people like, like it's the last time, absolutely. Uh, thinking about their loved ones, about their kids or their spouses or partners, you know, friends, um, thinking that they, oh, I, I might lose them, I might lose them, I'm, you know, and these thoughts, they are creating physical symptoms in your body anxiety, tension, you know, fight or flight mode, right? So, and it's, if it's chronic, it can lead to hormonal, hormonal disbalance and so many other health issues that at the, at the end, you don't even understand what's, where it all began, right? So you have to like uncover and uncover, but the longer you live with this fear, the longer you know, you will need time to, to really uncover that. Not usually like that, but still it happens. Sometimes it takes you a while to understand where is the cause. That's why when I work with my clients in hypnosis, it's so much easier to access, for them to access their subconscious mind and to find the, the, the first belief that they formed, the first belief that they formed that they fear of, fear of death, right? Um, sometimes they are staying in this kind of a, um, they, they cannot grow mentally, right? So they're staying in this stagnated state of mind, right? I don't want to do anything. I don't want to plan anything. Because what's the point? Because I'm afraid of dying. So why would I do something? Why would I take actions? Right? So these are the symptoms that are really important for people to, um, to really recognize and do not run from them. Like I would never recommend you shut down uh, or run away from your symptoms because eventually they're gonna catch up to you. 
And if they catch up, you won't like the consequences. That is, it's just the reality, right? So what are the causes of, of this fear of dying? And what can you do in order to free yourself from that fear? Because if you created that in your mind, you can uncreate it. You can absolutely overcome this. And you have to ask yourself a question, how long I want to be in this fear? How, how long am I willing to live with this fear? If someone told you that you're going to live with it for your whole life, that fears are just part of our life, you just have to deal with it, don't believe that person, please, because fears are learned like this and they can be unlearned like this. So that's, that's the reality, you know? Um, the first cause of the fear of dying is the um, regrets about past mistakes. You know, um, regrets about your life, right? Because that's, that's why you fear of, of dying, because you haven't lived yet, right? You feel like you haven't lived yet. Another cause can be guilt. Guilt is a huge thing, right? Like guilt is, as I said in my previous videos, it, it's a poison. The guilt is the poison that is poison in your body and your mind for years. So it's up to you if you want to release that guilt because it's possible, trust me. Uh, another one is um, hating what you do, right? Not following your heart, not doing what you love. Uh, a huge reason when sometimes we are in our teenage years or just before entering a college or choosing a profession, we don't follow our hearts, we don't listen to our intuition, so we start doing something that our parents told us the best to do, you know? So that can cause fear of dying as well in the future because you feel like you were pressed to do something that you don't want to do. We are actually pressed to do things that we don't want to do, things at the very early age. Even the school is the environment that we not always want to go there but have to, you know? Um, Another, another cause and root of the, of the fear of, da of dying is, um, can be uh, playing a role in life. So leave, like leaving the life of the you know, perfect, per perfect child, right? Or leaving a life of the carer, like giving out all your needs and not taking anything in return, right? So when you're given, 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 and not taken, right? Not receiving then it can be, you can be exhausted, right? So, and you also can be afraid of dying because you feel like, oh my God, I haven't even lived, you know, the really life for myself. So playing some role, and we all play the role in our life. We all form the strategies in childhood, right? Um, so another f underlying cause can be a fear of uncertainty. We don't know what's after life. And some religions will, will tell you what it is, but really no one knows. You know, no one knows. You can, you can believe in something and that will, and it's also the belief, right? And it can help you, it can help you actually with this fear if you believe that there is something after life. But some people are not religious, right? So they don't believe in the afterlife. So it's really hard for them to just understand that that's the end, you know, that's the end of my life. Fear of losing control, you know, we feel like we have control over life and a lot of people are born with this, you know, confidence that I can control my life and it's true to some extent because the only thing you can control is your thoughts. Your thoughts are the only thing that you can control. You feel like you can control your kids, your partner, your family, your business, your, your job, you know, um, your daily life. But if you think about it, anything of that can be taken away from you, really, you know, in, in like, like this. So the only thing you can control is the thoughts and the beliefs and the meaning that you put into the events. Um, fear of dying is actually can be really, really useful for you. You can really understand that the fear of dying is talking to you. It's telling you, wake up, wake up, reevaluate your life, think about yourself, you know? Are you doing what you are supposed to do? Are you enjoying life, you know? What is in the way, what is blocking you? What is keeping you stuck from leaving your life, right? Um, so you have this inner conflict, right? Because your body is telling you that 
you don't want to live that life that was imposed on you. But the other part is telling you that, oh, you have to do that because the community, because the, so, the society, right? So this inner conflict creates these fears, creates fears, phobias, because that's the only way that your body can talk to you. The only way that the, your body can give you these signals that something is wrong with, with you, right? Something is wrong with your functioning. Um, but it's, so it can be a pain, fear of dying can be a big pain, but it can also be your point of growth. In many times when I work with clients with the fear of dying, with phobias, right, they gain this huge understanding that, oh my goodness, I for, for 35 years, I, I wanted to be a hairstylist, but uh, my mom and my dad told me to be an accountant. That's just an example, but they realized that ah, I was never doing what I really like. That's why I'm so afraid of dying because, you know, I'm, I'm regretting my whole 20, last 20 years of life. And then they start, once you understand where the fear of dying is coming from, you can absolutely take steps, you know, to improve your life. Understanding is power understanding of any of your mental issue, any of your physical issue as well, will give you a clear picture of what you need to do. And then, of course, it's up to you whether you're going to do it or not, but at least you will know that my fear of dying is because I'm an accountant and not a hairstylist that I have always wanted to be, right? Um, the, the best way to overcome the fear of dying is to find where is it coming from. Where did you form that belief? Where did you start to really regret your life? Where did you start to really be afraid of the end, right? Um, and the sooner you do that, the better it, it becomes, right? And then you still have so many years of living like a, you know, a happy, joyful life, looking into the future, actually. Like looking forward towards the future. That's possible. I have seen that. It happened to me as well. I had a fear of flying and the underline was fear of dying, right? And why? Because I wasn't doing what I love. And once it was resolved, when, once I understood that, everything clicked in. You know, your mind is really smart. It will listen to you, but you need to help, right? And also, the more meaningless your life is, the, the more fears and phobias you're going to have. This is just the way it is, you know? So meaningful life. How to find it? You can do mindfulness, you can meditate, you can go to counselor, therapist. You can also, my contacts are downstairs, downstairs, um, down below, and you can absolutely contact me and we can see how hypnotherapy and RTT hypnotherapy, this, this breakthrough new method of hypnotherapy can help you, you know, overcome your fears and phobias and any issues that you might have in your life that are keeping you stuck. So yeah, just click down below, subscribe, because I'm going to talk about a lot of fears in the future and have an amazing life. Look forward into the future. There's so much more to life. Bye.